Well, very pleased to have with us on the program right now Paul Clement, the uh, attorney who represented the uh, National Rifle Association at the Supreme Court today. Mr. Clement, thank you so much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Good to be with you. So uh, let's just start. Overall, uh, uh, what's your take on uh, how the oral arguments went today? Well, I was I was pleased with the way the arguments went today. I think we got a great opportunity to tell the court uh, a number of things, but I guess the two most important things that we told the court today are, first of all, that the Second Amendment uh, really deserves to not be some uh, provision that only applies in the District of Columbia and the national parks, but like the First Amendment, like the Fourth Amendment, like the rest, applies across the country. And I think we did get that message to the court loud and clear. The second point that we made um, that's a little bit more a lawyer's point, but nonetheless I think was important, was that the due process clause gives the court a vehicle for coming to that uh, resolution that is an easy way for them to decide the case, doesn't require them to make any new law, just requires them to treat the Second Amendment the way it treats the other provisions of the Bill of Rights. Did you feel like uh, uh, you were thrown any curveballs by the uh, justices during oral arguments today, or uh, did you anticipate the line of questioning that, that you received? I, you know, I think I anticipated the general lines of questioning. I think Justice Stevens in particular was interested in exploring uh, the court's Sixth Amendment jurisprudence and maybe in an effort to say that they could, the court could somehow incorporate the Second Amendment without necessarily uh, taking along uh, every bit of the Heller decision and the like. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, making the point to, to him in response that generally with the other amendments, the court has taken the view that you incorporate not just uh, the First Amendment, but you also incorporate all the court's decisions that come along with that. And so I think, you know, since in many respects you can think about this case as being whether or not the people of Chicago have the benefit of the Heller ruling mm -hmm. that the people in D.C. have, I, I was certainly trying to get the court to understand that they should transfer the benefit of the Heller ruling to the people of Chicago. And to all Americans. Well, absolutely, by, by necessity. Obviously, this case involves the city of Chicago and the city of Oak Park, mm -hmm. but uh, what's at stake here is nothing less than whether the Second Amendment is going to apply across the nation or whether it's going to apply in the District of Columbia, you know, a few national parks and one or two other federal enclaves. So in that sense... The stakes in this case are enormous. And you brought up the fact to the justices that uh, there is not a lot of uh, case law at the federal level that uh, uh, needs to go along with this decision, which I would think would be a, a, a good thing for these justices to consider, that they're not uh, all of a sudden trying to impose decades or perhaps even uh, a century's worth of case law uh, onto states. You basically have the Heller decision and no, then this decision. I think that's exactly right. And I also think going forward, it's going to be, you know, the court is going to have to develop its Second Amendment jurisprudence. And that's going to be a challenge enough for the court if it's interpreting the Second Amendment in both the, to the federal system and all throughout the country. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if the alternative, which would be to have a Second Amendment that robustly applies to the federal government, but then some kind of watered-down version of the Second Amendment that applies to the states, uh, that would, you know, create, I think, just more confusion and more difficulty as the court tries to develop its approach to the Second Amendment. And I liked your, your phrase into this. You called it a shadow amendment. Right, and that is exactly what had, you know, I mean, I don't want to get too much into the details and, sure. and, and bore your listeners <laughs> with the history of the due process clause, but that's exactly what happened with some of the other constitutional guarantees in the early years of applying those guarantees. And so you had a robust due process right for the federal government. You had robust double jeopardy protection, but maybe half the protections applied in the states and the other half didn't. And that mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be something the court rejected that approach for the other amendments. And we sort of strongly wanted to get the message across that the court should reject that message for the uh, Second Amendment as well. Okay, now the uh, the court did not release the audio of the oral arguments, but I've been reading the transcripts, and I, I need your help, uh, Counselor. What was the city of Chicago's attorney trying to argue to the court? Because I heard a lot, I, I've read a lot of different uh, arguments that were, you know, sort of advanced and then uh, rebuffed and then he uh, uh, tried a different tack. Uh, uh, was there a consistent argument from the city of Chicago? Well, I think what the what what Chicago was trying to do, I think, which was, you know, and I think they'd be the first to admit it's difficult in light of the Heller decision. But I think what they were trying to do is basically leverage off of the preamble to the Second Amendment and basically say 
that, you know, I mean, in a sense, their burden is to explain why the Second Amendment, of all the amendments, would not be incorporated against the state. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's a fair starting point for them to try to say, well, there's one thing that's different about the Second Amendment. It's got this preambulatory clause that the other provisions of the Bill of Rights don't have. And I think what they were arguing is essentially, well, since we know that the framers had a very specific idea of what they were trying to do with the Second Amendment, which was to protect the militia, um, that doesn't that means it's something less than the kind of normal fundamental right where it was clearly designed only protect an individual right. Now, I can understand, you know, why in trying to craft an argument they might go that route, but I think the real problem they ran into, and you heard this from the justices, is that the the you know that's essentially just a variation on the theme that the Supreme Court heard in Heller and squarely rejected. You know, those that wanted to dismiss the Second Amendment as only being a collective right, that whole argument was based on the preamble and the re- and the reference to the militia. And the Supreme Court could not have more squarely rejected that line of analysis in Heller. And I just think it's a hard line to continue to press in the wake of Heller. There was uh, there was an exchange uh, between uh, Justice Breyer uh, and then Justice Scalia ended up responding. When, uh, Justice Breyer was talking about, uh, he said, is this right different from others? All you have to do is look at the briefs, look at the statistics. Uh, and then he started talking about this is a statistical issue. Uh, and Justice Scalia responded, well, there's a lot of statistical disagreement on whether the Miranda rule saved lives or not, whether it results in the release of dangerous people. Uh, we don't resolve questions like that on the basis of statistics do we? He uh, uh, said to Justice Breyer, "Were were were you surprised that uh, you know ag- again there there are mountains of statistics that uh, gun control advocates and supporters of the Second Amendment can point to, uh, you know, to uh, to bolster their arguments? Were you surprised that, that these statistics kind of came up in the oral arguments?" Well, I wasn't surprised because if you if you look at the opinion that Justice Breyer wrote, which of course was a dissenting opinion in Heller, he really focused a lot on those statistics as well. And so, in the sense, it's not surprising that Justice Breyer would bring those statistics back up. Mm-hmm. But I, I think if you look at the Heller opinion and the majority opinion, what you know, what Justice Scalia said there, which was consistent with what he was saying today, is, you know, there's a lot of statistics on both sides, and you know that's what you expect when there's a policy debate. But the great thing about the Second Amendment and the other provisions of the Bill of Rights is they take certain policy debates and essentially put them off limits because the framers have essentially done the policy analysis for us. And the framers decided that our individual right to keep and bear arms was more important than the countervailing statistics or anything like that. And so I think that in, in a way, what you really saw going on with that colloquy between Justice Breyer and Justice Scalia was almost, uh, you know, kind of a live reenactment of the, uh, of the debate that took place in the Heller opinions. Well, again, uh, Mr. Clement, I can't thank you enough for coming on the program. We're not going to see the uh, the decision uh, we expect was sometime in June. I mean, we know that there's no firm date uh, when the court will announce, right? No, there's no firm date, and essentially the court hands down all its opinions before it leaves town at the very end of June. I think given that this case, you know, it's already March, and this is a case that certainly seemed to grab the justice's interest, I think looking for this decision coming out towards the very end of the term is probably the right time to start looking for it. All right. Paul Clement, thank you again so much, uh, not only for coming on the program, but uh, uh, for your uh, arguments before the Supreme Court today. No, my pleasure on both scores. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Paul Clement, a former Solicitor General and uh, attorney representing the National Rifle Association at the Supreme Court in the uh, oral arguments in the McDonald case today.